Hello Flight Simmers and welcome back to Alpha Hotel Flight Simulator Training. In this lesson, we'll take a look at unusual attitudes and aircraft upset events and how to recover from them. As always, if you enjoy the content, be sure to like the video, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell to be alerted to new content. So what's considered an unusual attitude or the closely related aircraft upset or aircraft upset event? An aircraft upset is defined as an event that unintentionally exceeds the parameters experienced in normal flight or in-flight training, and in which loss of aircraft control in flight is a serious threat. The FAA goes on to define specific parameters that it considers an upset event. These parameters include a pitch attitude of greater than 25 degrees nose up, a pitch attitude of more than 10 degrees nose down, a bank angle greater than 45 degrees, and an airspeed that's inappropriate for the conditions or phase of flight regardless of attitude. The FAA does not define specific parameters for unusual attitudes, it just defines unusual attitudes as an attitude that is not normally required for instrument flight. There are several ways a pilot can unintentionally get themselves into an unusual attitude or aircraft upset event. Trying to rely on bodily sensations rather than trusting your instruments is probably the number one culprit. This can cause confusion and spatial disorientation, which can in turn lead you to not trust what you're seeing on your instruments. Lack of instrument proficiency and doing things like fixating or omitting during your instrument scan can also cause an upset. Distractions can often cause you to look away from your instruments, sometimes for a prolonged period of time, and be surprised by what you see when you look back at them. And upsets can also be caused by things like instrument failures, which we'll discuss in the next lesson, and by external events, such as a wake turbulence encounter or severe meteorological turbulence. Loss of control in-flight accidents are the leading cause of fatal general aviation accidents in the United States. So being able to recognize and recover from an, an upset or unusual attitude is something you will train for during your instrument training in the real world and something you'll be expected to demonstrate on your instrument checkride. While Flight Simulator is not a great place to practice recovering from unusual attitudes for several reasons we'll, get, we'll talk about later, it's good to know the recovery techniques just in case you get yourself into one while flying the simulator. It can save you from breaking your airplane and having to start the sim over, and knowing and practicing these skills in the real world can save your life. The first step in recovering from an unusual attitude or upset event is recognizing that you're in one in the first place and recognizing what kind of unusual attitude you're in. Unusual attitudes come in two different varieties, nose high and nose low. The symptoms and risk for each type are unique. A nose low attitude is one in which your pitch attitude is greater than 10 degrees nose down. The symptoms of this include your attitude indicator displaying mostly brown, indicating a nose low attitude, both your altimeter and VSI indicating a dive or loss of altitude, and your airspeed indicator showing a sometimes rapid rise in airspeed. You can also use your turn coordinator and heading indicator to determine the direction of the bank. There are also external signs that you're in a nose low attitude, such as an increase in the ambient noise around the airplane, usually caused by the increase in the speed and relative wind uh, crossing over the airplane, and possibly an increase in the sound of the engine and propeller noise as more air is rushing through the propeller and possibly making it uh, spin a little faster. The greatest threat in a nose low attitude is overstressing the airplane and potentially causing structural damage. A nose high attitude is one in which your pitch attitude is greater than 25 degrees nose up. The indications of this attitude are your attitude indicator displaying mostly blue, indicating a nose high attitude, both your altimeter and VSI indicating a climb or gain in altitude, your airspeed indicator showing a decrease in airspeed, and just like with a nose low attitude, you can also use your turn coordinator and heading indicator to determine the direction of bank if you're banked in in that unusual attitude. And just like with a nose low attitude, there are external signs 
sense that you're in a nose high attitude. Usually the ambient noise around the airplane will be much quieter due to the decrease in the speed of the relative winds. And the volume of the engine and propeller sound may get quieter, but may become more prominent as the noise of the relative wind diminishes and the engine noise diminishes a little, but not as much as the noise of the wind. The greatest threat from a nose high attitude is a stall, a subsequent spin, and loss of control. There are two different techniques of recovering from an unusual attitude or aircraft upset. The attitude dependent techniques and the all attitude upset recovery technique. With the attitude dependent techniques, you must first recognize whether you're in a nose low or nose high attitude and then perform the appropriate recovery maneuver for that attitude. For a nose low attitude, again, the highest risk is overstressing the aircraft from overspeeding or imposing a high G load on the aircraft. So the first thing you want to do is reduce power to reduce the aircraft's acceleration. Following this, you should roll the wings level in the shortest direction to the horizon to prevent a high G load as you recover from the dive. Then gently bring the nose up towards the horizon. Finally, use small corrections in pitch, roll, and power to stabilize in straight and level flight. Once you have enough experience, these control inputs should be pretty much made simultaneously. But as you first start training on unusual attitudes, you want to be methodical in performing them in the right order. It may be helpful to say to yourself as you recover, nose low, power, roll, pitch, and stabilize. What you don't want to do is yank back on the yoke with the aircraft in a steep diving bank and rip the wings off. Unfortunately, this is instinct for most pilots when they realize their nose is pointed squarely at the dirt. So it's something that you have to train yourself not to do. For a nose high attitude, the greatest risk is stalling and spinning. So the recommended recovery technique is to increase power and then pitch the nose down towards the horizon. You can then roll the aircraft back to level and remember that when the aircraft is slow, the ailerons won't be super effective. Once you've done all that, you can make small corrections to pitch and power to stabilize in straight and level flight. Just like with a nose low recovery, eventually you should get to the point where these control inputs are made basically simultaneously. But again, as a beginner, it's better to be methodical and do them in order, though one could argue in this type of recovery that getting the nose down is more important than adding power. You might find it helpful to say to yourself, nose high, power, pitch, roll, as you recover from this type of attitude. The most common mistake with this recovery technique is to try to roll the wings level when the aircraft is slow and the ailerons are not very effective or to overuse the rudder to get the wings to level and not correcting the nose up low energy state with power and pitch first. The all attitude upset recovery technique is a method that can be used, as the name suggests, regardless of the type of unusual attitude you're in. It came about in the early 2000s and has been embraced in particular by the airline industry in the United States. The method has five steps. The first is to disconnect any automation, including autopilot and auto throttles if the aircraft is so equipped. The second is to push or pitch forward a bit to unload the airplane and unload, unload the wings and prevent overstressing it. This shouldn't be an aggressive push at first, just a few degrees nose down. Most instructors in a motion simulator or real aircraft will tell you to push until you feel a bit light in the seat, so about half a G or so. You want to be light in the seat, but you don't want to float up out of it. Of course, most of us can't replicate this in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so just push down a few degrees. Third, you want to aggressively roll the wings to the nearest horizon. Fourth, you want to adjust the power according to your speed. If you're too fast, pull power back, and if you're too slow, push it up. The final step is to stabilize the aircraft in level flight by pitching to the horizon and adjusting the power. It's easy to remember the last four steps by reciting push, roll, power or thrust, and stabilize. And many airlines require pilots to verbalize this as they conduct this maneuver. Not everyone is wild about the all attitude upset recovery technique, particularly the part about pushing the nose down if you're already nose low. 
As of right now, the Airman Certification Standards don't require a particular technique to be used, and each technique we've covered is listed in an FAA training resource, so both are valid as it stands right now. The only proficiency standards for this maneuver are listed in the Airman Certification Standards for the Instrument Airplane Rating. It's in Area of Operations 4, Flight by Reference to Instruments. It is Task B, Recovery from Unusual Flight Attitudes. The proficiency standards state that the airman or the applicant should demonstrate the ability to use proper instrument cross-check and interpretation to identify an unusual attitude, including both nose high and nose low, and apply the appropriate pitch, bank, and power corrections in the correct sequence to return to a stabilized level flight attitude. So as long as you use one of the two approved techniques we've covered, the maneuver should be graded as satisfactory. In real life, the way this maneuver is usually conducted is that the instructor asks you to close your eyes and put your head down. They then do their best Bob Hoover impression for about 30 seconds, hopefully respecting the aircraft's limitations as they do so. At the end of their personal air show, they'll tell you to look up and recover the airplane. A good instructor will typically maneuver the airplane in a way that fools your senses into thinking you're positioned in space in a way that you're not. So you have to look up at the instruments, assess the situation, and then execute the proper recovery. Many flight simulators used for training, particularly the high dollar motion ones, will have features that simulate a wake turbulence encounter or some other phenomena that will cause an aircraft upset event you can practice recovering from. As I mentioned earlier, this isn't the easiest or best maneuver to practice in Microsoft Flight Simulator or any desktop sim for that matter. Part of the reason is that you're not moving, so you really can't fool your senses. The other reason is that you can't really put yourself in an unusual attitude that's going to surprise you the way an instructor or simulated wake turbulence encounter can. So you lose the portion of the training where you have to look up and assess the situation with your senses potentially giving you bad information. That being said, if you want to throw around your airplane and practice the recovery techniques using a desktop simulator is a pretty low risk way to do so. Just know that this training is quite a bit different in the real world than it is on a sim, so don't consider yourself real world proficient until you get some real world training. That concludes this lesson. Hopefully it's given you the knowledge you need to recover from unusual attitudes in the sim should you get yourself into one. Again, if you've enjoyed the content, be sure to like the video, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell to be alerted to new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.